Well, hello YouTube, this is Thomas Judge, back once again with another instalment of Valiant Till The Last, the weekly series in which I read the entirety of the Valiant universe. I always try to do it one deluxe edition at a time, and today we're looking at this one, Ivar Time Walker Deluxe Edition Volume 1. Slightly misleading, because there is no deluxe edition Volume 2, and uh, there can't be, because there's no more Ivar Time Walker issues, they're all collectors in here, so I don't really know what they were thinking. But let's just dive straight into it. We have got the standard kind of Valiant design that we would have for a deluxe hardcover from this era. Usual bit on the side, usual top banner, uh, a textless variant image. Uh, actually, I think this is the standard image of issue one of the series. The series itself is called Ivar Time Walker. It contains 12 issues. This is the usual spine. And deluxe edition, like I say, it says one there, which is a bit of a misnomer. Um, and then on the back, we've got the standard back. Top blurb, image bottom blurb, usual bits and pieces. Uh, these are the three brothers. You've got Aram, who we've just read as Armstrong, uh, Gilad, or Gilly, who we saw earlier as Eternal Warrior, and now we're getting into Ivar. So let's have a look at the internal flaps. You've got the usual blurb on the front. You've got the usual creator blurb on the back. Let's get that dust jacket off and see what it looks like raw. You've got a nice, lovely blocked cover there, Ivar Time Walker, with a little logo there. Really nice, like it. Um, on the spine, again, as you can see here, usual red blocking looks really nice, it'll look great on your shelf like this, and it's got the one, which again, unnecessary. Nice clean back, let's have a look at what's going on inside. So this is really straightforward, I Have Time Walker is a 12 issue series, it was published as three trade paperback collections, first collection of the first four issues, Making History, issues 5 to 8, Breaking History, and issues 9 to 12, ending history. The end. One single contained story. Uh, if you read these trade paperbacks, you'll find they'll end on cliffhangers. Um, so let's yeah, get straight into it. This is the first arc, Making History. Like you see, there's the cover there. And uh, what's it about? So this is about Ivar Time Walker. Um, and this is about uh, sp specifically in contemporary times, which is quite nice for a Three Brothers story. And the main character is this person here. This is a woman called Neela. And long story short, Neela is about to discover time travel. And that is going to lead to a whole shitload of problems. So Ivar turns up, uh, rescues her from various other people from different timelines that are trying to kill her. And there, thereby start the temporal hijinks across the length and breadth of the space-time continuum. Um, the story is cool, the story is clever, it is well written, it is loads of fun. It's got some kind of like hokey bits in it. Um, because they, they kind of address standard time travel questions like why can't you kill Hitler and how can you understand the language in different areas and time periods and stuff but basically this is a great story you've got cameos from people like Gilad the Eternal Warrior um, there's one bit which actually is a, a beat by beat page by page retread of the first two or three pages of Archer and Armstrong in other words the uh, the use of the uh, the magical device the boon and how they all get their powers and stuff, but it does it from a slightly different point of view. It's just, it's really good, it's really clever, um, and I, I just massively enjoyed it. Neela is a great character. If you've been watching the series so far, and this is like episode 50 or something, so why would you be starting here? Um, one of the earlier episodes, like, God, back in, even in single figures, I think, was me looking at um, the Harbinger comics, um, and specifically there's a mini-series there called Faith and the Future Force, which is brilliant, and I was a massive fan of. I really enjoyed reading Faith anyway. And in Faith and the Future Force, the entire story revolves around Neela, this character here, um, with a sidekick who we're going to meet later on in this story, um, and them sort of like fighting to save the timeline and working with Faith on that. And this is the genesis of the Neela character. Like, I remember reading Faith in the Future Force and thinking to myself, oh man, this is awesome, I want to see more of Neela. I want to see more of what she's up to, I want to see more of what's going on there. Well, this is the genesis of that character, finally. And it's great. It, this was not a letdown. This was everything that I'd hoped for. It was really well drawn, well put together. And the story is loads of fun. Um, yeah. Quite a clever thing about this story is, uh, like a lot of time travel stories, it can be a little bit complicated. So especially towards the end, you get to the you get to points where it's like, oh, that's that scene from an earlier issue, or this is that scene from an early comic, but from a different perspective, or this is why they said that several issues ago. 
and there's a lot of that going on so you do need to concentrate kind of hard to really follow what's what's happening here um that said it does pay off extremely i love this idea of an alternate universe with like clown vikings it's so clever um but yeah, there's a lot of that in this. A lot of kind of recursive, temporarily, temporarily, not even a word, tangled um, storylines. They're complex. They're internally consistent. Um, here we have like a future Rome where like dinosaurs basically have, have evolved to speak and become like, human-esque. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, as such, it's, it's a very clever story. Um, in many ways... This is set before we're introduced to Ivar in Archer and Armstrong Volume 1. As you'll remember in that deluxe hardcover we looked at just a few weeks ago, um, I was like, oh, Ivar finally turns up. I was like, well, actually this, although it was published long after that, see what I mean about it being complicated? I mean, there's all these different timelines, there's all sorts of stuff going on. Um, like I say, this, whilst it was published after that Archer and Armstrong reveal and introduction of Ivar Time Walker, technically this is actually a prologue and a prelude to that. But also, it is set afterwards, but also, it's complicated. I mean, time, time travel is confusing. And in that sense, all I can say is that, you know, just read this as a one and done. I think reading it now is absolutely fine. It made loads of sense and it explained loads to me, especially about this char- the set of characters here. Um, the uh, kind of this, this holy council that are observing and protecting the timeline, like it totally made sense. This was a perfectly great place to to read it. I loved it. I thought this was an excellent story. Really enjoyed it. Wanted to see more of it. Um, is this the perfect place to read it? It's it's complicated, man. That's all I can say. It's like, in a way, this is set after Archer and Armstrong. In a way, this is set before. Um, it does. It does already have characters like Ninjak and and Exo Man of War and so on, and Livewire hanging around. But yeah, it's it's a funny one. It's a funny one. Your your brain is going to feel like it's getting twisted slightly out of shape trying to make sense of where this fits in. So I would strongly recommend being what I call a Type J reader and just relaxing and just reading it for what it is. So that's the end of the series. There, all twelve issues. Um, and this is the gallery, decent gallery edition, at the end as well. Cool. Okay, um, right, what to say about this? Uh, what, what, are we, what are we reading next? Technically next, I was going to read the Archer and Armstrong, um, the next deluxe edition, which is actually called A and A. Um, but frankly, I really didn't want to. I really wanted to read more of this Time Walker type story. And specifically, I wanted to see more either of Ivar or even um, Neela, who's an excellent new character that they introduce in this. Um, so what I did, I uh, did a little bit of desk research, and unfortunately there isn't many more stories involving either Ivar or Neela, or Time Walkers in general, in the Valiant Universe, which I, which I kind of get, because I guess the um, the idea of time travel is a bit of a deal breaker, it's a bit of a game breaker sometimes. Um, so Neela is later seen in Faith in the Future Force, which I've already read and I loved, and then subsequently um, Neela features in a series called Doctor Tomorrow, which came out last year, and that's basically it. Um, and you know what, to be honest, I fancy reading Doctor Tomorrow because I wanted to read more of Neela and see what was going on because I think she's a brilliant character. Um, so, homework for next time is to read the five-issue, relatively recent miniseries, Doctor Tomorrow, um, which has got Neela in it as a time walker. Um, initially, I guess when I saw the covers, I thought it was a completely out-of-continuity story, but clearly it is in continuity in the Valiant Universe. And um, let's check that next time. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. As always, please follow me on Twitter at I am Thomas Judge, where I will post uh, a daily review of whatever comics I've been reading. You can get an idea of what I'm up to on the channel. Um, and as always, please support the channel by heading over to Amazon.com and checking out my prose novel about superheroes. It's a completely original piece of work. The first episode in it is called Arrivals, and the series as a whole is called No Gods or Kings. You can find an excerpt of that on my website, nogodsorkings.com. Until next time, everybody, stay classy.